Greetings, saints. Welcome once more this Sunday. Can we bow our heads and pray for the word? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I need to give you honor and praise this morning. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. Father, we need to thank you that we are here this morning once more to hear from you. And we believe that, Lord, you are going to speak to our hearts today. I pray that, Lord, there will not be any hindrance, any stumbling block for the word of God to penetrate into our lives and make changes upon our lives in accordance to your will, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, I want us to read in the book of Exodus, chapter 1. I will start from, I think it's 8. Uh, 16. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Sipra and the other poor, when you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the bedstool, it is, it, it is a son, you shall kill him, but if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. And um, I want to jump and go to 21. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every son that is born to the Hebrew, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. And I want to jump and go to Exodus 2. I will start from 1. Now a man from the house of Lev Levi went and took a at his wife a Levi woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when the he saw that he was a fine child. She hid him three months. When she could not hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of, 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 of bull brush, uh, brushes and dumped it with, with uh, he, he to me and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. Apologies for that. I can see I'm not used to my own Bible uh, because of the light. But I just want us to talk about when God preserves destiny. When God preserves destiny. And here in the Bible, we learn that in chapter 1, we are learning about this one group of people in our lives that they are like midwives in our lives. And I want to challenge each and every one of us to say that sometimes we need to be vessels of God. We need to be like these midwives who preserved destiny. And we learned that it was not an easy thing for them. They were instructed to kill the Hebrew male species. But because they feared God, they refused because they feared God, they didn't follow the instruction from the king. Because they feared God, they preserved life. They preserved destinies. They preserved the male child. They preserved the families. And because they did that against the king's will, it showed that they feared God more than men. They feared God more than that which was authority at that time. And they refused to follow authority that will make them to kill the destiny. They refused to follow instruction that will make them to kill the generation. They refused to kill the, the, the families because once they kill the male species that from the Hebrew, that means they were terminating, ten, they were terminating the lifespan of the Hebrew nation. And that means maybe we were not going to hear what we, we are hearing today in terms of what Moses did. But you learn that because they feared God, God honored them with families. Because the Bible says 
you shall reap what you sow. They sow families and God rewarded them. He gave them families because they preserved life. And I want us to go back into maybe realities. And these people, when they did that, they feared God, but they didn't know about Moses. So each and every one, each and every child, each and every person has got a child in them. They've got a destiny in them. They've got a purpose in them. But you find that their purpose is in the hands of wrong midwives. Their purpose is in the hands of wrong people who will want to destroy that purpose. But I'm here to urge everyone today to say that if you find yourself in your life, maybe you are in a point or in a, in, in a level of authority. Maybe you are in a level where you can be able to mentor people. Do that because God will reward you because you don't know what you are doing upon that person's life. You don't know. Maybe that is your Moses of tomorrow. You don't know. Maybe that is the person that is supposed to save life tomorrow. You don't know. Maybe that is a president for tomorrow. You don't know. Maybe that is a doctor for tomorrow. But when you see lies, respect that life. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's still fragile. Maybe it doesn't look like nothing will go right about that life. Maybe it's a child of a slavery. But I'm here to urge everyone today because some people are put into your life so that you can preserve their destiny. It doesn't matter what is surrounding, what is the circumstance upon those people's life. Sometimes you have been told by people of power, people of authority to say that this one you need to kill, this one you should not nature, this one is not supposed to live. But I'm here to say today, you don't know, maybe that is the Moses of tomorrow. And let God help us this morning. Let God help us this morning. And we find that there's been occurrences. There's been occurrences to spare Moses' life. We see occurrences, and it's not about Moses, but it's about the generation of the Israelites. And we find that there's been occurrences. We find here a mother. And in this world, hold a knife when it is tough to protect the child. Sometimes women do awkward things to protect their own children because they've got a vision. They see things that other people can't see. When other people are saying, I've given up upon the life of their own children, and they say that, hi, mine, there's nothing much I can do. The king said that the, the children need to die, and they allow these things, but we see a mother. We see a mother who will say, when it comes to my child, when she sees the child, she saw a fine young man. And she said that this one doesn't deserve to die. And she had to, to put herself in a situation of a compromise. She had to hide this child. And she didn't know when, when she hide this child, what will happen. But she risked her life. She said that it doesn't matter what will happen. But this one, I cannot allow this child to die. And she didn't know that this was Moses, by the way. That child didn't have a name at that moment. But she took a chance and she said that this one, I will put this child into the bank of the river. This one, I will make a plan for that child. And we find that there are women that are in a compromising situation. They had to choose whether a child needs to die. They have to choose whether a destiny of the child needs to die. They have to choose whether they have to choose the other route, which anyway, the child was going to die anyway. The destiny was going to die anyway. But I'm here to say, to age anyone, maybe it's not in that line. I'm saying today, there are parents today that they've given up upon the destiny of their little ones. There are parents today, whether you are a mother or a father, but you have given up upon the destiny of your child and you don't know that God, what God has put upon that child. You don't know the tomorrow of that child. You find that the history of Moses, he found his, himself into a situation and 
awkward situation where he had to kill an Egyptian, but that didn't stop who Moses was. When God preserved a destiny, you find that there's a whole lot of a lot of awkward things that God will do from your tender age and maybe you don't understand what is happening and I remember when my mom said you are one of the child who has given me a lot of challenges because when you were growing up you used to be sick a lot you used to see things a lot that any other people cannot see but she never gave up on me but she used to pray for me she used she didn't know who faith was she didn't know that one day I will sit like this. Maybe she looked at this fragile child and because she didn't know, but she did a role of a mother upon this child who was fragile, who was different from other kids, who took time to walk. I took time to walk. I couldn't speak for a long time. I didn't speak in a normal time that other children were speaking, but I could sing and worship God before I could utter my word and speak a word that made sense. But I thank God for a mother who natured this child that was different from other kids. Who natured this child that she didn't know that is the, is the, is the woman of God tomorrow. She natured this child who was awkward, seeing things at night that other people cannot see. But now I understand that that means my spiritual being was sharp. As a child, I could see the things that other people couldn't see in the spirit realm. But I realized that sometimes as a mother, you need to do awkward things that other people will think maybe you are crazy. You need to risk your life because you are preserving the destiny. It is said today that there are mothers that will curse their own children because they don't understand their destiny. There are mothers that don't want to take risks for their own children because they don't understand the Moses of tomorrow. They don't understand. They see the Moses. They see the situation of today, but they fail to see, to have a vision of seeing the Moses of tomorrow. We see midwives, their mentors, their pastors, their parents, their neighbors, their people around you, around the destinies of many people. There are people that are holding high rank positions and they've got Moses in their lives. They've got Moses, they've got doctors, they've, they've got president because they cannot see beyond they kill that which God has meant 